Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, while I'm waiting for the uh, ladder line to come in, or window line, for the uh, project I'm doing on the uh, uh, fan dipole for 75 and 80 meters, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with that antenna. I thought I'd go ahead and use one of these uh, Type 43 cores that I have and wind a 49 to 1 uh, for an N-fed half-wave antenna experiment. So here's the uh, diagram of the 49 to 1. It's an auto transformer. Primary is two turns, and the secondary is 14 turns. And uh, we've got a capacitor across the input there, which uh, makes that primary a tuned circuit. Now, as you can see, the first two turns are uh, wound together tightly. You know, I've been searching and searching for who designed this. I wanted to read more about the original design, but anyway, I haven't found it yet. So, um, I have this doorbell wire, it's 18 gauge, and I've used this, and, and this will this will be fine for up to 100 watts on most standard radios. You know, obviously if you're making this for a higher power installation, um, you would want to use higher uh, grade wire, thicker wire, heavier gauge wire, and perhaps uh, Teflon insulation, and so on and so forth, but I'm just building this for my little 100 watt radio. And uh, honestly, most of the time, I barely get above 40 watts. I just don't, don't need to run much power usually. But uh, I've twisted the uh, wires together. I'm going to wind them on the core here. Um, the antenna itself, I'm going to be using this assembly that I made up when I was testing the NFED uh, ideas for ladder line antennas. It's got a 9 to 1 on it right now. I'll be taking this off and putting the 49 to 1 on here. I want to pause here and show you how I came up with this idea. Now the common end-fed half wave is going to use this 49 to 1 transformer. And uh, it's a fairly common uh, on on that's been used on most of these end-fed half waves. I mean, everybody's using it. If you go to the QRP guys site and you look at their um, you look at their uh, end-fed half wave you can see that it's the same design. We've got one, two, actually they've got three turns on the primary and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow, so I think that's about the same ratio. <laughs> it's 49 to one, they just have more turns on the smaller core. But it's still the same thing. Um, there's a capacitor across the uh, primary. You know, here it is schematically. You know, and you can see it's it's pretty much the same design. Everybody's using this design uh, for a 49 to one. Uh, but but the thing is with a half wave um, end fed wire is you need a counterpoise, and most of these will rely on the coax shield to be the counterpoise, uh, and they're running you know their QRP builds so. At 5 watts, you don't have to worry too much about that RF coming back on your coax. Um, as far as the length of a counterpoise wire, if you wanted to use one, the uh, common ideal length would be a quarter wave, but you can get by with one much shorter. Uh, one design I ran across here was AA5TB. Instead of an un, -un he actually used a transformer. And in using a transformer, um, there's no physical connection to ground. You know, if you go and you look at, at uh, an un, un you can see that this bottom wire, the ground wire, is connected across. This is an auto transformer. Uh, and the, the secondary and primary share one connection here. So you actually have a DC path to ground or to the shield of the coax. So the shield of the coax can become your counterpoise. Uh, with his design, he used a transformer, so he actually had to have a counterpoiser return. And I saw this figure quite often, that the, the counterpoise doesn't have to be a quarter wave. Um, in fact, what he says here is that uh, you can get by with a much shorter counterpoise, uh, 0.05 of a wavelength, right? So like at 80 meters, that would be 6 feet uh, of counterpoiser, 2 meters not very long. Um, 
I saw that mentioned in several other places. It seems like you don't really need a long counterpoise. Uh, so that's what I decided to go with was to go to the uh, 0.05. Um, and actually, I ended up with a four foot just because of, of the material I had available. But it's working. And the idea would be six to, to nine feet or so, probably. But you can get away with four. Um, but that's, uh, that's why I decided to go with a shorter counterpoise. And it was mentioned elsewhere, too. Um, for example, this is on, uh, uh, which site is this? It's all a bunch of information about NFED half waves. There's the transformer. This is um, by uh, Steve Dick, K1RF. And uh, what he mentions here as well, uh, where is it? Where did I have that? Okay, there he's using the same transformer. Here we go. Um, for a suspended counterpoise wire, the ideal length the ideal length would be a quarter wavelength, which would provide the lowest impedance, yada, 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 yada. Uh, because the feed point impedance of an NFED half wave is high, you can get away with a lot shorter counterpoise. So, you know, again, um, more affirmation that you don't really need a full long counterpoise. So the idea for using window line uh, to build in the counterpoise was seeded by this uh, Zeppelin antenna. This is originally patented by a, a man named Fuchs, I think, back in the early 1900s. And uh, the idea here was that their counterpoise wire went parallel to the main radiator for a short distance. And again, in his, uh, in, the, in the patent recommendation, this was pointed out to me by a commenter on the Patreon page, uh, the ideal length was a, was a quarter uh, wavelength. But uh, as we know from the other 49 to 1s uh, and the NFED uh, websites that I showed, you can get away with a lot shorter ones. So this Zeppelin was what got me to thinking about the uh, configuration that I decided upon using the window line to build the uh, counterpoise wire in and have it running right alongside the main radiator. The uh, window line runs out down here at the end. I will put this uh, terminal and wing nut so I can attach the radiator wire to it and this will basically have a built-in counterpoise which should reduce the amount of RF coming back on the coax and you can put a choke on um, uh, upstream from this and uh, and do the same thing but this will give me an anchor point to hang the end from a built-in counterpoise a radiator and I'm gonna put the 49 to 1 here so I gotta wind this guy uh, it's gonna be two turns on the primary. It's a little bit harder to wind when the wire is twisted together. It wants to bow out, and I don't want it to bow out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this winding toroids, you know, you do enough of them, it gets easier. It doesn't bother you as much. <laughs> All right, there it is. There it is, all wound up. So we got the twisted wires, they come out here, this goes to ground. The, uh, after two turns, the uh, red comes out here, and uh, that goes to the center, right? So we've got one, two turns on the primary, and uh, 14 turns total for the secondary got to this wire here, which will go to this terminal on this wire of the window line. This wire of the window line is tied to ground, should have just enough space in here to fit the toroid in. Yeah, right there. Look at that. That'll fit right in there. And then I've got two 200 picofarad um, capacitors in series. <clears throat> now I haven't used the capacitance function on this new multimeter I've got here. Let's, uh, let's see what we see. So I've got these two capacitors here in series, high voltage caps. We should have 100 picofarad. Uh, yeah, 100 picofarad, <laughs> and that's what's called for. So that is our capacitor.
And finally, the capacitor. How do I want to do this? I think I want to just wrap that in like that. Yeah. All right. There we go. That's the 49 to 1 setup for testing. This screw, um, I can put another nut on if I want to add my own external counterpoise wire to lengthen the counterpoise as an experiment, but I think I got four feet um, on this ladder line going out. I got four feet of counterpoise, which is uh, uh, adequate for 40 meters, close for 80. Um, I think it'll do a, a, a lot to reducing the RF on the uh, coax. So the next thing to do, I've got 127 feet of uh, wire, counting the four feet on this. I'm going to go out and try to get this all pulled up into the air, and we can scan the antenna and see how it behaves. So here's an overview of the uh, antenna design. You know, as we've all talked about all these pieces, but I figured I'd put this up on the screen so you could all have a good look at it. Maybe do a screenshot if you want to uh, save this. Uh, if you can't do a screenshot, you can send me an email and I'll send you the picture. But uh, as you can see, it's uh, similar to the ZEP. And we've got an overall length there that's a half wave on the lowest band that we want. Now you have to include the length of that counterpoise wire. So if you need 127 feet and you've got a six foot uh, piece of ladder line, you'd, uh, you'd, you'd need 121 feet of wire to extend that out to give you the full 127, which would be for 80 meters. The uh, tower that I'm parked next to gave me a support for the one end of the wire. And it comes up from the RV, it's uh, hung there off the tower, it goes across to that tree in the far distance with a total length of 127 feet. And uh, that gets me up in the air. Now it's less than a quarter wave uh, above the ground for 80 meters, but uh, it actually worked out okay. I did do uh, an HF scan with the Mini VNA, and this is the scan here. The frequency is across the bottom of the screen there, and you can see a strong, the strongest dip. The yellow line is the SWR, and you can see the strongest dip is down there at 80 meters. If we go and we look at the 80 meter scan, I scanned each of the bands. Let's look at all of them. So here's the 80 meter scan. Um, I think I've got my wire just a little bit long. As you can see, the uh, SWR dip is right down there at 3.5 megahertz. Uh, but if we look at the bandwidth um, from uh, 1.5 to 1 to 1.5 to 1, uh, that is actually around uh, 220, 230 kilohertz, which is about what you would expect to see with a regular dipole. So the bandwidth is, is turning out to be just what you'd see with a dipole. Other bands, uh, 40 meters. Um, the dip was again a little bit low. Like I said, I think the antenna is a little bit long. Uh, but a good solid dip down below 1.5 to 1. 20 meters, it gets strange. Uh, the dip is actually closer to the uh, center of the band and not quite as pronounced. Uh, let's see, uh, 15 meters. Um, oh, yeah, it's around the center of the band or up a little ways, but we got a good solid dip there. So, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing pretty much what we'd expect to see with it. Now these are all not really lined up very well with the center of the band, like I said, but you know what, uh, the antenna tuner in the ICOM just brings them right in. Finally, 10 meters, the dip is not nearly as pronounced, and it's up, uh, <laughs> it's right up there at the top edge, top half of the band. Um, so, you wouldn't really run tunerless with this thing, um, except maybe on 80 meters. You could, but uh, it's close enough that an auto tuner or the tuner in the radio will bring it right in. I did do some whisper testing, uh, but I did not get a good uh, test on the lower bands. There are quite a few storms in the area that night. And you can see the red X in the map is where I'm at, and there are storms all the way around me. Uh, 80 meters and 40 meters were so noisy with almost continuous static crashes that uh, I had hardly any hits uh, on whisper. And uh, that, that makes sense. I'm sure all the receiving stations in range were also seeing all those static crashes. You can hear them here on 80. It's almost continuous, uh, sometimes 10 over 9 static. And then 40 meters was just about as bad. On 20 meters, however, I did get some pretty good hits. And this whisper beacon was running one quarter of a watt, 250 milliwatts. 
And uh, you can see I got all the way out there to Austria on one hit and uh, did pretty well here on the uh, continent. So uh, the antenna seems to be getting out pretty well. Uh, let's go do a QSO. Kilo Bravo Niner, Romeo Lima Whiskey, Portable 5. Okay, KB9 RLW, Portable 5, 5.9 MIT. Yeah, you're about a 5.8 to 5.9 uh, on the southern Texas Gulf Coast near Corpus Christi. The name is Kevin. And uh, I think the county is Aransas County, if that matters. Or... Okay, well, Texas is all I need, Kevin. Uh, the name here is Tim. Uh, and uh, but you'll find, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of uh, there's several of us using this call. So right now I'm Tim. <laughs> uh, and to tell you the truth, you're actually at zero here. You're totally off the side of my beam, but... Uh, but uh, we have a very quiet location, so we pick you up just fine. Thank you much. Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill. Picking up a lot of stations out of Mexico. the noise floor, S4 to S5. Ooh, some static crashes from lightning still. Where's that little CW? There should be a bunch of CW down here. Okay, no antenna tuner. I'm down at the bottom end of the band near where the uh, low SWR dip is. And I've got uh, 40 watts and zero return to power. So my call out there to make sure I ID, but. Uh, the ICOM's internal tuner, of course, will tweak the, the little bit of mismatch that we get in the higher portion of the band just fine. And I get out pretty well up here, too. Um, I've checked into a, a net already, and I've been tuning around listening to guys. Unlike last night, there's not that much lightning going on this morning. Of course, the sun's been up for a little while, so the band is starting to close down. 40. I'm going to wait a little while for the uh, RV service net to get started and see if I can work them out there in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so far, the antenna is working out great. Um, just absolutely wonderful. So that's my take on the uh, end-fed half-wave. Um, I like the idea of using the ladder line to give you a built-in counterpoise. So you have uh, a little less to deal with when you put the antenna up. You have the benefit of a counterpoise and uh, less RF on the coax. Uh, which I did verify, by the way. I didn't film it, but uh, when I use uh, no counterpoise on an NFED wire and I transmit, uh, the RF coming back on the coax tends to make the lights flicker on my uh, auto tuner. And there was no more flickering lights, so it definitely works. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Um, if anybody builds this, uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of it if, after you get a chance to play with it. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.